in Haiti. We ask you, Lord, that your mercies would rain down upon Haiti. Remember the children, remember the women, remember all our brothers and sisters there, God. We ask for deliverance for them. We pray that you would provide, O oh Lord, for if the news are correct, Lord, they need your provision, they need your protection, they need your guidance, God. We ask you to do something about leadership, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. As we look to you, not just on our own behalf, but on the behalf of our brothers and sisters. Lord, we commit this ceremony into your hands. We pray, God, that all that would be done will bring glory and honor to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan, Governor General of St. Vincent Town de Grenadines. Dr. the Honorable Ralph E. Gonzales, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Honorable Montgomery Daniel, Minister of Transport, Works, Land, Surveys, and Physical Planning. The Honorable Dr. Godwin Friday, Leader of the Opposition. The Honorable Carlos James, Minister of Tourism, Civil Aviation, Sustainable Development and Culture. The Honorable Sabutu Caesar, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labor. Bishop Gilbert Porter. His Excellency Jose Manuel Ventura, Dean of the Diplomatic Corps and other members of the Diplomatic Corps. Mr. Anvil Williams, Commissioner of Police. Leaders and members of the Garifuna delegations and members of the Garifuna Heritage Foundation. Uniform organizations and cultural organizations. Members of the media, viewers, listeners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to officially welcome you to the wreath lane ceremony at the obelisk at Dorsetshire Hill, where on an annual basis, we commemorate the life and works of our sole national hero, the right excellent paramount chief, our Garifuna chief, Joseph Chatier. In fact, it is important that we pause to pay homage to our Garinagu ancestors who have toiled long and hard to ensure that the Garifuna heritage lives on up to this day. Furthermore, it is our homecoming team, our Garifuna brothers and sisters who return to Yurume, the Garifuna land year after year, and they are here to celebrate with us today. I think that deserves a round of applause. On the legacy to ensure that we recapture, revamp, and revive our Garifuna heritage whilst simultaneously promoting and preserving our story, our Garifuna story from one generation to next, so we too can be, so we too can know our roots. After all, it was Marcus Messiah Garvey who emphasized a people without knowledge of our past history is like a tree without roots. Our indigenous people have lived to not like trees without roots, but like trees firmly grounded, firmly planted, firmly rooted in who we are, where we are from, and what we have achieved to be able to survive the challenges. As we move from trials to triumph, as we celebrate in beauty and richness of our culture, proud, strong, resilient Vincentians, Chatier Pigny, children of Chatier, the true fruits of our heritage, this is who we are. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you so much for being here today and to say how pleased we are to see so many of you have come out here today in the blistering sunshine and of course the, should I say gentle breeze? The program will begin at this time as we invite to do our first cultural presentation. Pupils from the Bookerman Bay Secondary School, please welcome them as they come. A vibrant tapestry woven from the rich threads of African, Indian, and Garifuna heritage. Our intertwined cultures create a unique fusion of diverse traditions, including the sound of our forebears, the sound of Africa, the drums of our fathers, drumming, rumbling, tumbling, rooted deep in, in our, our veins. Rooted deep in our African traditions connects us with ancestors as we express our artistic talents to the rhythm and the rhyme. To the rhythm and the rhyme of our rhythmic African Kalinago Garifuna heritage. Hail Chateauye! Let's celebrate who we are as a people, our rich Garifuna folklore, interspersed with rich beliefs, sets the tone for who we are, paves the way for us today, as we embrace our roots in folk dance, prose, and sweet, sweet folk song. Hear the melodious music we played, hear the melodious music we enjoyed, as we remember the good old days. regional solidarity and address global issues. Together, let's harmonize for a sustainable future. This is who we are. Gonna love my country, love my land, Fitzy. Love the beaches, love the sun, Fitzy. Love the rivers and all the sea, Fitzy. Gonna protect it in every way. Creates adversity. 
feel like sneakers. When you go to have to cook up on the beaches, make sure you clean your spot when you're leaving. Up in on the mountain, I want me greenest. That's why you're for tillers, they mean I just stream them. Cause they know they're gonna kill out all the fish them. I can't do that, no. Hands. Put your hands together once more in appreciation for the students from the Bookerman Bay Secondary School. At this time, we will have greetings, and uh, to do the first greetings this morning, I'd invite Mr. Marlon Joseph, committee member of the Garifuna Heritage Foundation. Please allow me to adopt the protocol already established. On behalf of the Garifuna Heritage Foundation, I bring heartfelt congratulations to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines upon the celebration of another National Heroes Day. Today's National Heroes Day marks the 229th anniversary of the death of His Excellency Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier. Joseph Chateauier is indeed a badge of honor shining against the splendid apparel of our nation's history. Joseph Chateauier continues to be our lone national hero, and this suggests that his elevation to that status has raised the bar so high that he remains a hard act to follow. A fearless Garifuna leader and warrior, he continues to be an ideal representation of courage, resilience, and determination in the face of adversity. Each year on this occasion, we honor this incomparable defender of Yurume with a 21-gun salute. Each year beyond the explosion and smell of gunpowder, we are provoked to reflect upon his death in the field of battle, where he sacrificed his life to save the people of this land and to preserve the values that continue to be precious breaths within the Vincentian body politic. The values of nationalism and self-determination are still central to our sense of nationhood 229 years after Chateauier's death and 227 years after the exile of our Garifuna brothers and sisters. Today, as we pay homage to Chief Chateauier, let us remember also the principle of equality that drove the Garifuna to see themselves as no less than the colonizers, and therefore just as deserving of their liberty. Let us also remember the principle of justice that drove them to oppose the dishonest appropriation of their lands. Let us also remember the principle of inclusivity that drove them to fight to the death against alienation. These principles must be a part of our moral monument to Chateauier as we aspire to build a society where every individual has the opportunity to thrive and contribute to the collective advancement of our nation. March 14th is, of course, a commemoration of Chateauier's death. And while it is important to remember when and how he died, it is even more important to remember how he lived. To remember how Chateauier lived as a Garifuna in a Garifuna society is for us as Vincentians to reckon with a heritage with which many of us are still too uncomfortable and of which too many of us are ignorant. As Vincentians, should we not be able to declare with a sense of pride rather than with trepidation that this is Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier, our national hero, and this is how he spoke. So let us speak, Garifuna. This is Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier, our national hero, and this is how he danced. So let us dance, Garifuna. This is Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier, our national hero, and this is how he communed with our ancestors. So let us appreciate Garifuna spirituality. 
This is Paramount Chief Joseph Chatelier, our national hero, and this is the rhythm of his drums. So let Garafuna drums be the rhythm of our state ceremonies. We cannot, as a people, celebrate a Garafuna as a national hero and yet continue to be indifferent to that which defines him as Garafuna. This indifference is undoubtedly a consequence of the disruptions concomitant with the act of forced exile and acts of genocide. This is why we in the Garafuna Heritage Foundation strongly support this government and CARICOM's call for reparations for native genocide. We have in the past made that call ourselves because we believe that what happened to our people on Boliso and subsequently on Rotan was an act of genocide. In this regard, we welcome the statement by the Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves, made on January 3rd, 2024, that the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines will purchase or seek to acquire the island of Baliso. We consider this island to be sacred ground where the bones of our ancestors are buried and we look forward with great excitement to the day when Baliso will be designated a National Heritage Park. In March 2012, the Garafuna Heritage Foundation organized an international Garafuna conference here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This conference featured presentations by the many scholars from around the world on subjects pertinent to the survival, existence, and advancement of the Garafuna heritage and culture. Many of these academics were not Garafuna themselves, but they were and continue to be committed to putting their resources into supporting the preservation and the development of the culture. That 2012 conference concluded with the Uremi Declaration, which supported the call for reparations and mandated our foundation to establish an international Garafuna resource center here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is one of our main goals, and it forms the nexus of our public education program. We remain committed to this goal and will continue to pursue opportunities of collaboration with government, civil society, the Garafuna diaspora, academia, and the creative sector, and all willing partners to ensure that a consciousness damaged by pugnacious colonialism is repaired through education and connection. So, let us continue to welcome our Garafuna brothers and sisters back to Yeremi, because when they come, they are coming not only to heal, they are coming also to help us to repair and restore the wealth of intangible heritage that we lost many years ago. This healing and this reparation on a personal and national level will be slow and long, but we must be convinced and therefore encouraged that the little steps we take today will result in a monumental outcome tomorrow. Long live Paramount Chief Joseph Chatelier. Long live Yuremi. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together in appreciation of the contribution from the Garifuna Heritage Foundation. At this time, we will have Garifuna Ho Homecoming Team 2024 with Queen Frida Sideroff, head of the Yuremi Royal Delegation, and Mr. Trevor Palacio, head of the delegation, Garifuna Rites of Passage and Pilgrimage. Witi Binafi, I speak in the language of our ancestors. I want to take this opportunity to thank the Prime Minister and his very 
and his team for making a desperate attempt to acquire Baliso and make it a national heritage, UNESCO national heritage. And it is quite, as we stand here on this very sacred soil where our ancestors, Chateauier and the other, our other fighters sacrificed their life here. But I would like to introduce the members of the Garifuna contingent. Uh, first of all, as we, this is a ladies month. So I want to introduce Ms. Cedar Sederoff. And uh, I will go. Queen, oh, hold on, right there, Miss Queen Frida Sederoff of the Yurume Royal Delegation. Dr. Esther Don Nunez, Yurume Royal Delegation. Mr. Trevor Palacio, President of the International Garifuna Council and Coordinator of the Garifuna Heritage Passage and Pilgrimage. Uh, the, yes, Mrs. Joan Hoyt, a Carib from Sandy Bay, and one of the first, not the, the only lawyer from above the Dry River. And we are under, um, we're going to hear a poem from the, from Mrs. Hoyt, Esquire. So without further ado, I would like to present my distinguished guests and speakers. Thank you. Mucho gracias. Ni, cheche ni. Awaha Giribu Yadiwa Dagala Furiegi Le Wawago Awaha Giribu Yadiwa Sungwa Gir Lu Warara Mung Lida Aba Ladiga Wagiaba Were Wagia Waderabugo Lung lida bala aba weibuga. Lau aba samino uwara guati. Furie gitina lau wagura bahonya la. Lu waresi biruni wanichigu. Furie gitina lau Agura bahoni le e lu lege lefege tu bala wago lu wanichigo hebe wagenda gu wamago lirangyu aba hita wagi lau isieni luma inebese binafile biniwa huma. Many blessings. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Big to be nafi, my people. I am here today to thank honorable, esteemed Dr. Gonzalo. I thank you from my heart. I am here to present my dissertation, which stated, retracing the footprints of my ancestors through pilgrimage in search of reconciliation and healing based on the pilgrimage and 2017 and 2019. 
Dr. Gonzal, you left an indelible mark in my heart that I had to continue my research. I've lived in Belize and we got rain ago. We were discriminated against. We were marginalized. We were subjugated. I always question, why am I Garifuna when I was eight years old? Because of the discrimination in Belize, the Garinagu against the Creole. It continued as I transitioned to the United States in New York City. I knew identity politics, black versus white. It is a binary. It doesn't matter. You are the other. As I arrived here, in St. Vincent in 2017. Dr. Gonzalez opened up St. Vincent to his last brothers and sisters. My heart for the first time, I felt a place that you call home. The tears kept rolling. I am finally home. I can drop my sword. The defense mechanism is gone. Dr. Gonzalez, you welcome us and you always explain to us that we are family. And indeed, as I continue my journey researching the Garenago, which took me to London where it started, the British, and I understood why the sun never set on the British Empire, the stolen globe, the platter of artifacts that was stolen across the globe. My sisters and brother, before I close, Take this with you, that race was just a social construct that was designed to subjugate us and for us to be pitted against each other. Creole versus Garifuna, tribalism, small island versus large island. We are one people and keep in mind, you, we, you are your brother's keeper. I thank you. I be the the one, I live in life, I saw the world. Boogie you by burger, something you by phone. I be the the one, I live on my life, I know the world. Something you by phone. Something about folk. We give thanks to the most beneficent, the most high, and our ancestors. We to be nafi hon sungu be. We to hear chiluru ya, lu ya kuma wama lu hagamu ni dumure li da ge lu lu ba li da ge li malali garabali. Thank you for being here this morning to be a part of this vision and to hear the voice of the wind. Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez, thank you, sir, for your tenacity, your consistency. You the real McCoy man. Lonagle Chateauye. We bestowed that name upon you last year. Lonagle Chateauye means messenger of Chateau Ye. You are living up to it. Servant, job, well done. C.G. McIntosh, thank you, sire. Redo, National Police, the Garifuna Heritage Foundation, G.I.P.S.V.G. of New York City, and above all, my Vincentian brothers and sisters, this is about you. We want to name the Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier. We want to name his beloved Barauda Chateauier. We want to name Sarah Baptiste. We want to name Duvalier Chateauier. We want to name Peter Valentine. We want to name James Daniel. These names are brethren and sisters of St. Vincent and the Grenadines who toiled on the land and fought 
for the people. May they rest in peace. We will not and shall not forget you. We also want to honor, we will be remiss not to mention the most honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who taught us that we are a microcosm, a unitarian particle of the universal intelligence. We repeat that year after year. That is who we are. We mentioned the ancestors, but this moment is about now. How do we heal Mother Earth from the impact of climate change? How do we make sure that we secure a future for our children, our men and women who lack economic opportunities? How do we assure that our senior citizens, we're mentioning the least of these, how do we make sure that our senior citizens are secure, our women? This is the month of women. We want to close our remark by saying to the men, to the boys, empower the women and everything will fall into place. Please repeat after us. One God, one aim, one destiny. Long live Joseph Chateauier. Ode to Baliso. Baliso, Baliso, land of death. Of 32 isles in the Grenadines, um, upon, oh, sorry, of 32 isles in the Grenadines, oh, hostile, inhospitable rock, upon your barren, windswept shores, no respite from the cruel sun, no soil for planting, no animals for hunting, no water for drinking, for cooking, for washing, even though surrounded by water. No trees for shade or canoe building. No place for living. No way of escaping home to Hyruna, where verdant mountains in the distance Britain quickly divide up into plantations, while on your parched, shoreless coast, O Baliso, perished and left to rot hundreds of, sorry, 2,000 Carib patriots. Baliso, O Baliso, Land of defiance. You could not destroy that indomitable spirit, nor vanquish over thousands of years of sovereignty of just the right to be. For whether red, black, or yellow caribs, when charged with treason by the crown, defiantly refused to bow down. Some vanished into the hills, refusing to surrender. And of the 5,000 or so delivered to your internment, O Baliso, half refused to die, only to be exiled to an unknown, distant Honduran isle. But Baliso, oh Baliso, oh, Baliso, land of rebirth, take no credit in your role of ending centuries of resistance to colonial gold. 
for our ancestors' lamentations carried on the wind in supplication hastened the sunset on thy empire while everywhere, both near and far, Joseph Chateau's descendants, like phoenixes, have arisen, restoring our language, our culture, our bravery, our gallantry, our history. Thank you. Uh, could members of the delegation please come up? Andoni, Risi, Angela, whoever else is here with our delegation, we're going to present something to the Prime Minister, please. And we have people here all the way from England, y'all. Yes. 2023, Good Evening International Indigenous Film Festival, Humanitarian Award, His Excellency Ralph Gonzalez, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, championing the cause, reclaiming Balasa. Thank you very much, my brothers, my sisters, from the bottom of my heart. I receive this plaque on behalf of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yes, thank you. And Your Excellency, we know it's just a matter of time. It is a matter of time. I want to thank you for this very beautiful watch. Um, I shall keep it and wear it only once <laughs> when we sign off on the purchase of or the acquisition of Balito. I am I'm not accustomed to wearing expensive watches. I wear cheap Timex. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are welcome. We would like to call um, Zoila Ellis to the podium, please. And, and so we would like for Angela Palacio Ms. Zoila, Ellis Brown, Garifuna International Film Festival Foundation Ambassador of Culture, Ms. Zoila Ellis Brown, championing the cause of cultural preservation. Ms. Ellis, Ms. Ellis. Up, <laughs> Do you have a word? <laughs> well, um, this is a complete surprise. I'm totally overwhelmed and grateful and appreciative. Thank you very much. And we know that with the work that you're doing, standing and championing the cause, we know as well, that it's just a matter of time. Oh, I believe that, absolutely. <laughs> and this is for you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Sereme Hon Sungu Bay, thank you all. Aba Isini.
Put your hands together in appreciation of our friends from the Garifuna Homecoming Team of 2024. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to invite to the lectern to make remarks the Honorable Carlos James, Minister of Tourism, Civil Aviation, Sustainable Development, and Culture. Please welcome him as he comes. Your Excellency, the Governor General, Dame Susan Duggan, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Dion Ralph E. Gonsalves, Leader of the Opposition, Dr. Dion Godwin Friday, other parliamentary colleagues, including the Minister of Agriculture, Subota Caesar, Minister of Education, Curtis King, members of the Diplomatic Corps, specially invited guests, our brothers and sisters who have traveled from afar to be with us here of our Garifuna brothers and sisters, we welcome you to Yorome, home of Chatea. Today we recognize our country's first national hero, His Excellency Chief Joseph Chatea. We stand on the very blood-soaked ground where he took his final breath. We gather here this morning, not just in honor of the legacy of our first national hero, but it is a symbol of our resilience as a people, and more particularly, our indigenous peoples, those who reside here and those who are scattered across the Americas. It is also a recognition of our journey from conquest, colonialization, migration, and our struggles from exploitation and injustice, even amidst our post-colonial challenges, which continue to affect our people profoundly. As Franz Fanon eloquently puts it, each generation must discover its mission, fulfill it, or betray it. It is the idea that each generation has its own unique challenges and responsibilities, and it must find its purpose and its mission in the context of its time. Our growth as a civilization is chronicled in the many things before us. Our right to self-determination, our creative imagination fostered by an immersion of the rhythms of Africa and the cultivated by the dynamic process of our Caribbean creolization. Our development as a country and a people with leaders who have emerged from the very bowels of our working class formulates the concept of our Caribbean identity in its post-colonial formations. The United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People has called for the recognition, promotion, and protection of the rights of indigenous peoples. It is a vision of a world that is just and equitable, 
grounded on the principles of justice, democracy, and the respect for human rights. So too, we must push for the preservation of the language of our indigenous peoples, noting the recommendation by the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues to proclaim 2022 to 2032 the International Decade of Indigenous Languages. This provides an opportunity for the preservation, revitalization, and promotion of our Garifuna language right here in Yurumi. We focus on building an inclusive, sustainable, and resilient future. We must acknowledge further the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the right to maintain, control, protect and develop cultural heritage, traditional knowledge, and the traditional cultural expressions. Our efforts must be urgently scaled up to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Equally, we must work together to multiply our efforts so that the 2030 agenda meets the development aspirations of our indigenous peoples. Our government's commitment to reclaiming Baliso must be commended, more particularly our Prime Minister's commitment to pursuing this undertaking to do simply what is right, correcting a long legacy and a history of historical wrongs. Amidst the challenges, domestic and global, which continue to test our resolve, we continue to see the best of our Vincentian people. We remain hopeful that our efforts today will set the platform for tomorrow's generation. I challenge our people to raise their level of consciousness let us put aside the things that divide us as a people. It is our time to pay it forward. Continue the struggle for social and reparatory justice, ensuring the preservation of our indigenous people. As we remember Chateau, let us use this occasion to recommit ourselves to the struggle of the working people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We do so boldly, collectively, as a people and as a country. Our government continues to work in the interests of our people. As the Prime Minister would often say, Believe what you see. Faith without works is dead. Hope without action is a dream. The fight for our people's future is long from over. It is a marathon in which only those who act wisely and with foresight will reach the finish line. As we pass the baton to the next generation of freedom fighters, together, let's harmonize for a sustainable future. Long live the people's struggle for self-determination, social justice, reparations. Long live Chateau, long live Yurumi.
Ladies and gentlemen, please accept my apologies. At this time, we'd like to invite to make remarks Dr. the Honorable Godwin Friday, Leader of the Opposition. Her Excellency, <clears throat> Governor General, Dame Susan Duggan, Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Ralph E. Gonzalez, members of Parliament, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members of the clergy, and especially the Garifuna delegation who have traveled here to be with us today. And good morning to everyone who is listening near and far. As you may have <laughs> discerned by now, I do have a problem with my voice, but hopefully I'll make it through. It is an honor to be here as I have been for the past several years to celebrate National Heroes Day. In addition to the formal ceremony here today, at this revered spot at Dorset Hill, there will be other activities, principally in Greg's and in Fancy. We look forward to participating in those as well. For those of you who are just taking the day off to stay at home or to go to the beach, make it meaningful because today is a special day. This national holiday is a time to pause and to take the opportunity to reflect, both from a personal standpoint and in a national way on the journeys that we have undertaken singularly and together this year. And it gives us a moment to look forward as well as to how we can continue to build our beautiful country. We have battled through many challenges, many, many challenges in recent times. Nevertheless, we have much to celebrate and to be thankful for. We have life. We have family and friends. We have community. We have our beautiful country. Most of all, we have the grace and the mercy of God. But though we may be consumed with our own trials and challenges, we cannot forget the great sorrow that our forebears lived and witnessed over two centuries ago. That is the exile and the near extermination of the Garifuna people. And lest we are tempted to absolve the perpetrators of this monstrous crime by saying it was a different age and a different time and that morals and mores excused and accommodated such actions we should think again, for it was not so long ago. It was not the Dark Ages. In Europe, it was a time of enlightenment and progress, of science and art, a time of fervent and burgeoning Christianity, which taught us that we are all God's children and must love one another as we love ourselves. So the servants of British imperialism knew what they were doing when they hunted the Garifuna warriors and stabbed them into submission, they were following a deliberate plan. When they decided that the Garifuna could not be trusted to truly surrender to them, though they had come with awesome weapons and an unquenchable lust for conquest to take away their land and vanquish their sovereignty, 
They banished them from their homeland. First to Baliso, then to Roatan, and ultimately to Central America. That much of the history we know. That part is painfully familiar to all of us. But do we know how the people who were forcibly marooned on Baliso lived during those terrible months that they were there as captives? Can we even begin to imagine what a mother might have said to her child under those terrible conditions when there was no food to eat, no water to drink, and death stalked them all? Can we even imagine what a father said to his wife and children to console them and to give them hope when he had no land to farm, could not go to sea to catch fish, and therefore could not provide for his family? And can we imagine what it must have been like to suddenly go from a fierce assertion of liberty and sovereignty to being trapped on a barren island, their home in sight, but unable to go back because hostile ships patrol the waters and would soon take them further away from their homes, never to return. Like the vastness of the universe, it is unimaginable. And thus, the crime committed, the injustice done to these people, our ancestors, is on the same scale. As such, can there ever be atonement? I think not. But that does not mean that we do nothing. We speak now of legally acquiring Baliso and making it protective heritage of our nation. That time has finally arrived, and it is welcome. We speak also of reparations for the harm that was done. That too is welcome. But of course, the declaration of Baliso as a heritage site is not really a cause for celebration. Celebration would not be the right way to describe it. For there is too much suffering and pain underlying that act of recognition and preservation. There is too much death and sorrow on Baliso, too many graves of our captive ancestors. And we do not celebrate in a graveyard. Rather, the preservation of Baliso would be a solemn act, a solemn act of recognition of that pain and suffering. And it will be a promise that they will never be forgotten. And that we will forever mourn those who suffered and died in the genocide. We owe it to them because it is upon their struggle and their indomitable spirit that we now continue to build our nation. The obstacles we confront today may appear different, but the struggle is the same for human dignity and a people's sovereignty. Every year at this time, we here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we reflect on this tragedy. But for the descendants of the exiled Garifuna, it is far more than a cause for reflection, as we have heard today. It is a great sorrow, a sense of loss, a yearning to return, to make a journey that their tormentors, the tormentors of their forebears, never intended them to make. But you're here today. A week ago, I was in Trinidad, and I met a gentleman who said to me that he, he was from Belize, and we were there as part of a meeting. And he knew I was from St. Vincent, and the first thing he wanted to tell me is that he was Garifuna. 
that he had never been to St. Vincent, but he was hoping to make the journey soon. I hope I can welcome him when he arrives. Beyond the monuments and the sacred places we properly recognize, there are the lessons we have learned from our Garifuna ancestors that may help us on the way forward. The first is this, no matter the hardship, persevere, keep moving forward. Think about it. How did just over 2,000 people forced to settle in a strange and hostile land survive with their culture and language to be here today? over 200 years later. That is a story yet to be properly told, to be celebrated, not just by Garifuna, not just by the people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but by all of humanity. It must be told, for it exemplifies courage and heroism beyond measure and that can only inspire us. In our daily lives today, we have been able to rely on the efforts and kindness of everyday heroes up and down this country, who too often go unnoticed, unheralded, but who in important ways walk in the footsteps of Chateauier and our Garifuna ancestors. Today, as Vincentians, we look to them for inspiration as we seek to protect what we have and strive for better. In true Chateauier spirit, we recognize that we have a duty to do much more, to build on his legacy for generations to come. Our country has faced so much over the past few years, overcoming COVID and responding to the eruption of La Soufre and the subsequent difficulties the high rate of homicides, the ongoing hunt for jobs for so many of our young people. For me, and for so many across the land, Chateauier's spirit and example gives us strength to push forward. Even when we do not see a light at the end of the tunnel, we keep moving forward. We have seen people, everyday heroes throughout our communities, step forward to do what is needed when they are called upon. They don't have big names. They don't boast about what they have done. They may not even recognize it as heroism. They are members of our communities, our churches, our workplaces, members of our families who, make, who work to make our lives and our country better. The public servants who work tirelessly to ensure that we get the services we need to keep our lives on track, to make sure that the services are provided so that people get paid, that the businesses can import and export goods, there are, that our roads and infrastructure get the attention that they need. Our police officers who do so much with so little, yet if we are to turn the tide against crime and violence, in our society, we expect them to do more. They put themselves at risk to protect our safety, and to them we are grateful. To the teachers, the unsung heroes of our communities throughout our country, they are building a future for our nation every day when they spend time with our children. They inspire our young people and give them the knowledge and the skills to build lives here for themselves and to strive for a better future. Without teachers, there would be no heroes of tomorrow. The relentless work of the farmers in sun and rain to put food on our table and to provide goods to export, they do not get enough praise. Our fisher folk who in rough seas go out day after day so that we can have food to eat. They have been neglected for too long and not given the respect and the support that is their due. 
Let us recognize that they too are, in their way, heroes. Business owners who have the energy and the drive and the zeal to set up their own businesses, generating employment and opportunity in our country for all our people. They build a private sector needed for our economy to grow and for our country to prosper. They too are heroes. Nurses, doctors, and other health professionals working every day, even often in challenging conditions, to protect our health of all our people, young and old. The volunteers who help manage sports events, who help take care of others, who do things that we take for granted in our communities, they are indispensable to us. They don't always hear that from us, so let us tell them. They can literally save lives. In my own community, not too long ago, there was a terrible plane crash in which four people died. Without thinking of themselves, local divers and other volunteers went into the sea to try to save lives and failing that to recover the bodies of those who had perished. When all is said and done, the acts of all these everyday heroes are centered around making our country a better place making it worthy of our ancestors who dreamed of it. Let us look with optimism to the rest of this year and beyond. In the spirit of Shatoye and our Garifuna ancestors, let us not be deterred by the odds, even if they may appear insurmountable. We have our history to give us the courage to persevere and the belief in ourselves to triumph. Remember, just over 2,000 Garifuna people landed in Rotan and Central America. They were shipped off there. Against unimaginable odds, they have not only survived, they have flourished. That is what we can and must celebrate. They are part of us. As I part, I just give a little story. My children and grandchildren should not grow up as ignorant as I was of this important part of our history. 30 years ago, when I was in Canada, a friend of mine came to me. He worked for an NGO. He brought a dictionary, a Garifuna dictionary, that his organization had sponsored. He was so proud of it. He brought it to me to give me a copy to show the work that he had done on behalf of our people. I'm ashamed to say I didn't even know how to thank him because I did not appreciate the importance of what he had done. Now I know better because I have educated myself. We must take that effort to educate our children so that they do not end up that way as well. And of course, we must also continue to pray for peace in the world. In the wars in the Middle East, in the Ukraine, the difficult times in politics in Haiti, and of course, the disagreements between our brothers, our friends, in Venezuela and Guyana, that we will have peaceful outcomes. To our Garifuna brothers and sisters, on this hallowed spot, thank you for coming. Thank you for helping us to repatriate our culture. Welcome home, brothers and sisters. Our future is brighter together. I wish all of you, everyone listening to my voice here, and afar. A happy and peaceful day. May God bless you and your families. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Friday. At this time, we'll have another cultural presentation, and we'd invite the Vinci Dance Ensemble to do a presentation for us as part of today's ceremony. Please welcome them.
uh, otherwise uh, good weather. Very strong gentle from time to time, a gust of wind or two. Uh, but it's uh, all good for the cooling of those that's over right here, the Guard of Honor. Uh, um, Guard of Honor. But we uh, also uh, on with us. much and thank you young ladies that was very well done at this time we'd have the featured address the featured address will be delivered by dr the honorable ralph e gonzales prime minister of st vincent and the grenadines please welcome the prime minister as he comes to make his presentation
Madam Chairperson, Your Excellency the Governor General, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Cabinet and Parliamentary colleagues, Your Excellencies, the members of the Diplomatic Corps, our dear brothers and sisters who have come to us from Central America and from North America and elsewhere, who are here to celebrate with us National Heroes Day. I welcome you always with a heart full of love and joy. I want to greet all those from St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are present, and especially the children, and I see the girl guides, and we are very happy to have the, the police force resplendent today, the drummers, and everything in the organization has indicated that those responsible in the Ministry of Culture, they're up in their game beautifully, and I thank them. I want to identify fully with the remarks of Bishop Porter, and I call that prayer and his remarks in, in relation to Haiti my own. I want to thank the magnificent speeches and poetic expressions of the president of the Garifuna Heritage Foundation, our dear royal sister, Queen Frida, and my princess, who is a professor at Medgavers in New York, we are happy to have you, and we look forward to your theses and the outputs of your research work. I was happy to hear Joan, Joan Hyde, with her poetic musings, very touching, and of course, Trevor Palacio, who has a very strong and clear perspective as to what we are about, not only in relation to Garifuna, but in our contemporary struggle against colonialism, neocolonialism, imperialism, and the right to sustainable development for all. I want to thank you, my brother, for your remarks. Carlos James, this morning, outdid himself. I'm very proud of you. I'm very, very proud of you. You are absolutely brilliant, and I accept everything that you say as my own. I just would like to point out, even amidst it all, sometimes if you have a keen eye and science begins and ends with observation, I think there is one slight fly in the ointment. I don't think we ought to tamper with the national flag. However, it may be attractive from the standpoint of bling, from the standpoint of artistic liberty. I don't think that the color on the left of the flag is in our flag. So I just want to make that observation. I am not damning anyone. I just make the observation, and I think everybody would agree with me. We can, we, can, we can respect and revere our flag in every material particular while being modernistic and being artistic and to have an outpouring of celebration. Now, I want to say a couple of things. I want to begin a little, just briefly, something about me for my friends who have come from overseas. At my age, I'm 77 years old, 
I don't have any interest or large ambitions other than those for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean, and the oppressed people the world over. And I have been an unlikely person to have arisen to the office of Prime Minister. I went to primary school barefooted. I didn't have a shoe until I a hard shoe until I was twelve years old. I didn't have pipe worn water in our homes until I was 14 years and I didn't have electricity until I was 12 years. So the chances of somebody like that to arise to the office of Prime Minister, I leave it to those who reflect on the will of God. And I would not have been here if out of 200 plus students at the end of 1958 that I didn't secure in a competitive exam one of 30 places to enter the only secondary school at the time, which was a boys' secondary school. So having gone through all kinds of trials and difficulties, I am where I am at the moment. And the people have put their faith and trust in me for 23 years thus far as Prime Minister. You can rely on me not to be afraid of any great power, not to give in to follies and to resist creatively in the interests of our people. I usually hear a lot of noises. I process them and I do what I consider to be right in all the circumstances. And I seek to do so with a patience and a calm, knowing that sun brightens stone and all the river burns. We came to office on March the 29, 2001. Before that time, the state was not involved in this ceremony. This ceremony was done by one or two small NGO groups, including the National Youth Council, and one or two other personalities who understood and appreciated the significance of Chateauier, the war for national liberation against colonialism and for the defense of our independence and sovereignty. These things are now mainstream in the discussion in this country. People who are afraid often to speak in those terms. It is now normal so to do. And all of these things have become a noise in our blood and an echo in our bones. And I'm telling you, you can always rely on us to defend the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to walk in the giant footsteps of the right excellence Paramount Chief Joseph Chateauier, our national hero.
We don't have to do it with any fanfare. We do it day by day because it's here and it's here. Now, I made a point in my opening statement at CELAC, the Community of States and Latin America and the Caribbean Summit, here in Bocament, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are the first CARICOM country to hold the presidency of CELAC. 33 states, 650 million people. We were told that a country as small as we, we are, we couldn't do it. You remember the negativism? And still there is some. Some say that SILAC is a farce. But SILAC had within its declaration, incorporated within its declaration, the rights of indigenous people in our hemisphere and around the world. And we incorporated into our declaration, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. That's a farce? Huh? Is that a farce? You have heard from my dear sister that when she was in Belize, she felt discriminated against. It was her experience. We know, and you heard it in Joan Hoyt's poem, that there was historic discrimination against the Kalinago and Garifuna people. An affirmation on our own soil, in our own leadership of Silak. We said to the world, we put down our marker about the rights of the indigenous people. You need to read, you know. You need to read. And you need to reflect. But never to reflect with a colonial mind. Never to reflect with a mind stuffed with imperial notions. We are not better than anyone. But nobody is better than us. Now, I made a point at SILAC Summit, and I restated it yesterday when given an opportunity to intervene at this fantastic international Garifuna conference. And the organization here, the Garifuna Foundation, must be complimented for, doing the, for carrying out this activity on an annual basis. I said at SILAC, and I want everybody to hear it. I want every school teacher to teach what I am about to say. I want them to research it. I want them to understand it. And having understood it, must transmit it. And transmit it with wisdom. They must apply their heart to wisdom after understanding. That is how the Hebrew people advised us. Not just information. A lot of people can find information. But you have to understand that information. The matters which are before you. And then, having gotten a profound understanding, you then apply your heart to wisdom and make your judgments and carry out your appropriate action. That's how it's done. The social scientists 
would analyze it in different ways. I'm putting it in a very popular manner for how we must all address information, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom as prelude to appropriate action. I said that St. Vincent and the Grenadines has an especial place in the historiography of the Caribbean. And having made that fundamental point, I proceeded to provide the evidence. And you can get the information to support the evidence. The first is that our country in the entire Western Hemisphere had the shortest period of the enslavement of African bodies. 1764 to 1838. Barbados, for instance, was a slave colony from around 1630. St. Kitts, a little earlier. Antigua, just a little later. Jamaica, 1655. And you can go through all of them. You know why this country came late to the enslavement of African bodies by the Europeans? Two principal reasons. One, the rugged terrain, but very fundamentally, the determination of the Kalinago and the Garifuna not to be colonized. Well, I see a listening policeman. You never hear this story before, spoken this way. Well, you're hearing it today. The question is in his head, but Ralph, if the Garifuna were an admixture of Africans and Kalinago, how when the British arrived, they met Garifuna? Which takes me to the next point. Why we are special in the historiography of the Caribbean. Remember, you know, we're not better than anybody. We're nobody better than us. Now, Africans came to St. Vincent and the Grenadines before slavery was established in 1763 in our country. Africans came here from three sources. One, runaway slaves. They had been running away from Barbados, taking boats, coming here. You may say, but how they could manage that? Well, nowadays, man don't use boat and just come across from Barbados to Yasso. It's only 100 miles, you know. And remember this. How is it that the Kalinago and the Garifuna moved by boats between here and St. Kitts, for example? Which is all the way up the road, going not. We must use our heads there. Eh? So the first source. Before slavery was established here. For a hundred and something years. Africans, quote unquote runaway slaves from Barbados. Came here. And if you run away from slavery. One thing for sure, you're allowing anybody to put you back into it.
The second was in the 1670s when there was a, a slave ship which ran aground and a number of the Africans who survived came here to St. Vincent. Second group. Thirdly, the French brought a few enslaved African bodies on about two, 3,000 acres of land. They were allowed by the Kalinago and the Garifuna to plant pimento and spices of one kind or the other on the western side. But when they came, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was not a slave society. So they did not exist in a condition in a slave society. Why we are also a special? The only people of, the only Africans and persons of African descent known as Garifuna who were never enslaved were those who were here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines before colonialism arrived. You didn't know that, eh, brother? Eh? Ah, well, they know it today. There must be a noise in your blood and there must be an echo in your bone. And Chateauier, whom we celebrate, you know why I celebrate Chateau here? Yeah? I celebrate him because he lives in me. My mother and father died. It's a period of great pain and suffering. And I mourned. But every single day, I remember my mother and father with joy, with love. And their teachings and their example. So while I have pain for the death of Chateauier. And while I have pain and suffering for the 2,000 and something persons who died in a six months period on Baliso. Nobody must ask me not to celebrate them because they live every day in me. You hear me? I can mourn. I can feel the pain. I can be solemn. And at the same time, I can celebrate. I can be joyous. Because redemption is a joy. Redemption may come from a pain. From suffering. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. And it will come for us when we get Baliso in our hands. So those who may wish to weep and gnash their teeth in solemnity can do that. But I would celebrate for joy and commune with the spirits of our ancestors and go to Almighty God in thanks and gratitude for seeing that day where a historic wrong would be righted. Those who think we must just mourn, I urge some more education and re-education. That's what I urge. Now, when we come here to Dorsetshire Hill, we come to Dorsetshire Hill on National Heroes Day because the history which we accept teaches us 
that here is where Chateauier was ambushed and killed. The British colonialists want to tell us that Major Leith, some Englishman, killed Chateauier in a duel. Foolishness. The record doesn't support that at all. But when we come to here, look at the place. I always say that the hills are joyful together. You know, in 1827, Sabi, a fellow F. W. N. Bailey wrote a book called Four Years' Residence in the West Indies. He came here between April and May 1827. I didn't know about this book until 2005. As everybody knows, I went to a Benedictine monastery for 10, year, 10 days to see if I can do a lot of self-criticism and be a better person. And all of us have to do that day by day, sweet Jesus. It ain't a sign of weakness to do that, you know. It's a sign of strength. Because the only one who doesn't have any weakness and any limitations is God made flesh in Jesus Christ. And despite all our weaknesses and limitations, we have strengths and possibilities. And together, not just alone, but together, even though we are small, we can be mighty. When F.W. and Bailey came here first in a boat, Bailey had a colonial mindset. But what he saw about the beauty and majesty of this country, he couldn't help but record. This is what he said. This is what he saw. Chateau was killed in 1795. So Bailey is writing 30 years after Chateauier is dead. And he's looking at the country. He's sailing. He says this. People say a great deal about the Alps and the Pyrenees and the romantic and beautiful soft scenery of Italy. And heaven forbid, I who have not seen should pretend to detract from the praise which all who have acknowledged them to merit. I may, however, be permitted to state my conviction that there is no scenery in Italy, nor the world, that can surpass, either in beauty or interest, the very lovely approach to the island of St. Vincent along the Windward Coast. And despite what we have in our, before our eyes daily, there were people who were telling me, you couldn't get a world-class hotel in St. Vincent. It could only happen in the Grenadines. Yet, they are some of the same persons who will speak that they will wish to follow the example of Chateauier. Saying that you must follow the example of Chateauier must not be worn as an adornment, as a costume, as a pretense. You must feel it in your heart and your mind and you must act to do it. No. In 2001, 
there was a large divide between what used to be called Carib country and the south. Rabuka Dry River. Two or three football field in width. And when, when rain came into the mountains and the, the river come down, anything passing at the base of the river get washed away and people died. When we said that we would build a bridge there, they say Ralph is a crazy man. But the spirit of Chateau here told me that I was very sane. And those who thought I was crazy, them are the ones who should have been in the mental hospital. Because our government was fortified by this spirit. And by the way, it is this spirit of Chateauier which I firmly believe in for the defense of our sovereignty and independence. Why I will never be party, and I'll say it here on Heroes Day, never be party to selling our passport or selling our citizenship. Chateauier would not have approved of it. Citizenship is the highest office in the land. It's not a commodity for sale. Despite all kind of blandishments, Chateau, you didn't sell it, you know. And the passport is the outward sign of the inward grace of citizenship. So I ain't talking no flowery words to you. I am talking issues which come from the mind and the heart and the interests of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, the same matter, and I have to talk these things so that you will know how the journey, what the journey has been like. In 2013, this government, went to CARICOM. I wrote the, 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 the documents. I personally wrote the documents, submitted to CARICOM. For us to put permanently on the agenda of CARICOM, the question of reparations on native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies. And that we must set up a CARICOM reparations commission. And we must set up national reparations committees or commissions in every member country of CARICOM. When we did it first, you remember, always there are naysayers. Sanballat and Tobiah of the Ammonites, their descendants. All naysayers. What did they say? Reparations is a pipe dream. It will never happen. And they then said, how are you going to calculate reparations? You're going to discount the reparations from the reparations. The granting aid that British, Britain, Britain gave us a few times over the years. Well, all of that Nissan is now gone. In the last 10 years, we have won the argument and we have won the opinion. Because you can win the argument and don't win the opinion, you know. And reparations is not about seeking to identify the bloodline of individual Kalinago or Garifuna, or the bloodline of individual persons of African descent. No. Reparations is about repairing the legacy of underdevelopment 
caused by native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies. That is what it is. To repair, to correct the legacy of underdevelopment in every material particular caused by native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies. And you see already, university is doing it. The Anglican Church in England say they want to give a hundred million pounds. Well, that's certainly enough. <laughs> that's certainly not enough. And I tell you this, if we do not formally get reparations before I go to meet my savior, I will go safely and surely knowing that sometime in the future that there will be reparations for native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies. Look at the declaration between SILAC and the European Union. I co-chaired that summit in Brussels with the, the president of the European Council. Such a summit had not been held for eight years. And in that declaration, for the first time ever, the question of reparations for native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies was recognized. And the CARICOM 10-point plan was acknowledged inside of that declaration. And you tell me that Silak is a farce? Eh? There are things done in your name. I know sometimes you have to get up in the morning. You have to brush your, you have to fix up your shoes. You might have a child or two. You have to take care of them or your husband. You have to make breakfast or your partner. And then you have you have your police clothes very nice and so on. And you may not have time to read all the things that Ralph signed in your name. But know for certainty. I will not sign anything in your name which is not in your interest. On that, you can be reassured. And you can learn more about it day by day. Now, I come to Baliso. I don't want to go over the terrain, the territory, which has been covered thus far in relation to Baliso. You know, strange enough, I had I came here with a terrible pain in my left elbow, hurting me a great deal. But somehow, since I'm talking, the pain is in, going there bit by bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I see my brethren skeet smiling. Good man here. I want to read a letter which I wrote to the chiefs of here on January the 2nd. To bring the water, give me. Thanks. Why did I have to write the chiefs of here on the subject of acquisition of Baliso by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Because by law, that is the office that I have to go to for valuation and for negotiation 
and for the initiating any publication if there is no settlement between quote-unquote owner and government when you move into acquisition under the law. This is what I wrote. Just bear with me so that there will be no doubt as to where we are. Dear Chief Sauveur, further to my oral conversation, stroke instructions on the above caption matter, I state the following because I, had, I talked to him before, but I thought this matter is so important that I had to put pen to paper so that nobody in the surface department could forget that I spoke to them. Further to my conversation and the oral instructions on the above caption matter, I state the following. One, it is the intention of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to acquire Baliso as a cultural historic memorial site from the fee simple owners as per the law and constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's point one. Two, the acquisition is grounded on the necessity and desirability of keeping this historic Baliso as part of our national patrimony. Three, the current owners of Baliso have not shown any practical inclination or the possession of the means to develop Baliso at all or in the context of historical cultural requisites attendant upon such a development. Four, almost every year, around March 14th, the anniversary of the death of His Right Excellent Joseph Chateauier, national hero, Agencies acting on behalf of the owners of Baliso or of those with an interest to profit from the sale of Baliso agitate our people unnecessarily with astronomical asking prices for Baliso. Completely unrealistic. By the way, since I spoke publicly and wrote this letter, this is the first March 14th that I hear anybody put up any price of Bali so publicly and shouting it from the treetop. Huh? Why did they want to irritate us? Well, they were irritating a lot of people, but they weren't irritating me. Because I know what is in my head, what is in my being. And time longer than twine. Five. The declaration by my government not to grant any foreigner as purchaser an alien landholding license for Baliso or to permit any development contrary or inimical to the historical cultural requisites. Six, on the nearby island of Batawia, no development whatsoever will be permitted. It will be kept as a bird sanctuary, natural habitat. Seven, I spoke to the lawyer for, for the quote-unquote owners of Baliso a few days ago about this matter. I informed him that the chief surveyor will be in touch with him for discussions relating to a purchase if there is agreement or acquisition if there is no agreement. Clearly, the government of St. Vincent and Grenadine must ascertain that Mr. Huggins is, sorry, the lawyer's clients actually have good title to Baliso. I am sure that the Attorney General will assist you in this regard. Meanwhile, I'm requesting that a relevant valuation be done. The government of St. Vincent considers this matter one of urgency. I'm hopeful that the transaction, the purchase or acquisition, can be effected before March 14, 2024. Well, we haven't been able to get it done because they went late to Baliso to do the valuation and I haven't gotten the valuation report as yet. But the Chief Surveyor is in communication with the lawyers for the owners 
and the Attorney General, his office is carrying out a title search to see whether those who say the owner, they are the owners, they are in fact the owners. I'm not disputing that they are the owners, you know. But if we are going to either buy or acquire, I want to know by documentary evidence who are the owners. Now what we are care about, and this government has always been engaged in making the links with the Garifuna in Belize, in Guatemala, in Honduras, and in Nicaragua, and in North America, and anywhere else. They are descendants of the Garifuna. And it is part of our diaspora policy to reach out and engage. And that is why, among other things, the Consul General of the government in New York City is here with us and in this period. We are addressing the collective memory of our, and our history, our own history. I always say to everyone, when we go to our history, we must understand it, have knowledge of it, apply our heart to wisdom, and act upon it. But we must not live in history. We cannot live in 1795. We cannot live in 1797. But we can live in the spirit and the ideas of those whom we wish to emulate in the 21st century to deal with our contemporary problems. You understand me? Because the Kalinago and the Garifuna, when the British came here, they met about 10,000. Then, of course, there was native genocide carried out, and then the 5,000 who were sent to Baliso. So the numbers were vastly reduced. And the purpose of the, the British from very early said they wanted to get rid of the Kalinago and the Garifuna. That's part of the plan, to get them away from St. Vincent. And eventually, they killed a lot. They sent 5,000 to Baliso. Half died. Half they forcibly exiled in Central America. And the rest, they sent them. They, they quarantined them in inhospitable parts of the country and especially, but not only, north of the Dry River. And we have, and I want persons of other ethnicities to hear me. While we celebrate on National Heroes Day, Joseph Chateauier, and as the only national hero thus far, and we emphasize naturally his heroic struggles and those of the Kalinago and Garifuna people. There are other people of other ethnicities and other histories who are here. And that is why I say, metaphorically, we are like a symphony, the entire Caribbean. We are the songs of the indigenous people, the Kalinago and the Garifuna. We are the rhythm of Africa. We are the melody of Europe. We are the chords of Asia and we are the homegrown lyrics of the Caribbean. Like all symphonies, from time to time we will have dissonances. But those dissonances are either resolved or mute through our cultural institutions or formal institutions, the parliament, the law courts, and the like. So we must not have a narrow perspective of our history 
And because we cannot have a narrow perspective of our history, because of this metaphoric symphony, how we have evolved, we have to understand too the histories of those other ethnicities and how we have become realized as one, integrated in this modern St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but with a special pride of place, naturally, for the Kalinago and the Garifuna. That is how I want us, in a proper, holistic manner, to address this, so that what the sister points out, we mustn't have this divisiveness. We must have a wholeness in order for us to go forward. I have to say something about national, other national heroes. We have received the reports from the National Heroes Committee. And the National Heroes Committee ha it has recommended that it has advised the cabinet that they would think that the cabinet ought to approve for on sending by me to the Governor General, who is the Chancellor of the Order of National Hero. Incidentally, before our time, there was no National Heroes Act. And how you can be a national hero is there, there, there are specific categories. And national heroes cannot be living. You have to be dead to be a national hero. So it's okay to talk loosely that the sanitation workers whom we, we very much admire their work and we are thankful for their work and they do excellent work or the farmers or the fisher folk and so on. In some loose way, if you want to call them heroes with a common H, you can do that. But not in the context of national heroes. That's a different category altogether, which is defined in law. I have to bring clarity because I heard some talk about that earlier today. So I, I, I don't want confusion to exist. The recommendations have been made in relation to George Augustus McIntosh, Ebenezer Theodore Joshua, Robert Milton Keto, the father of independence, J.P. Eustace, educator. Those are the ones. But there's been further discussion and the idea that the pantheon of heroes ought not to be entirely masculine. There is more than one woman in our history who can reasonably be considered to be elevated to the status of national hero. So we would wish that conversation to go on and hopefully in the not too distant future, we can bring that conversation to an end and then I will advise the Governor General accordingly under the National Heroes Act. As I end, I want to tell you, I want to quote two poems, how we see the exercise which we are about. I quote them from time to time because they're two Vincentian poets. One of them is Daniel Williams. In the poem, We Are the Cenotaphs. You gave me the watch. And you said to me, time. He said, we are all time. But only the future is ours to desecrate. 
The present is the past. And the past, our oh, father's mischiefs. Not our oh, mother's mischiefs. Our oh, father's mischiefs. So the only time that we have to desecrate is the future. In order to avoid the desecration of the future, we have to have faith, fresh hope, and love. I wrote a whole book on it. It's here, the time of respair. Beyond COVID, volcanic eruption, Hurricane Elsa, global turmoil, fresh hope for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I've written a book to you, you can find it on Amazon, or you appear to be interested, called Caribbean Reparatory Justice, where I wrote about reparations for native genocide and the enslavement of African bodies, published in 2014. And in this book, I quoted a poem by Ellsworth Shakin. And it offers the perspective, and he has helped me to understand the point that I was making about the need to commemorate, Mike, and celebrate. To deal with pain and suffering and joys and triumph. I can do both things, you know. I can walk and chew gum. Because we, who are not better than anybody else, we, who nobody is better than, we all have the capacity to become finished personalities. Amidst all our weaknesses and limitations. And this is what Sheikhin said in a poem called Private Prayer. He wrote this poem in April 1973 for Walter Rodney, who had just published at, Lovo, at Bogle Louverture Publications in London, the book called How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And this is what Sheikhin said. To understand how the whole thing run, I have to ask my parents and even my daughter and son. To understand the form of compromise I am, I must in my own voice ask how the whole thing run. To ask why I don't dream in the same language I live in. I must rise up among the syllables of my parents in the land which I am and form a whole daughter and a whole son out of the compromise which I am. To understand history, I have to come home. Through the fever of history, we have been altered, but in our alteration, Something remains permanent. Love. Love for our people, our country, is a never fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. Amen. We are all compromises through the history. Our brothers and sisters who live in the diaspora have to work through these compromises on a daily basis. And working through them, you are guided by certain ideas and ideals of those from the past. And they has come, as they have come to you and to be interpret, or interpreted by you in the present for the improvement of our existing condition. And what do we have to do out of all this compromise? Who we are is to make a whole daughter and a whole son. And to understand history, we have to come home. Not come home spatially to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, do you know what I mean? Though we welcome you. And those of us who live here and go elsewhere, 
You come home to history because you come home to yourself. You come home to yourself. Thank you, and may Almighty God continue to bless us all. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Ralph Egan Sells. Let's put our hands together in appreciation of all the speeches we've heard and all the presentations we've heard here this morning. Thank you so much. At this time, I'd invite uh, Kerian Graves to read the citation. Kerian? Excellencies, all good morning. Today, we gather to honor the right excellent paramount Chief Joseph Chatelier. He died in the area, a fighter for self-determination and independence. This defender of Hiruna was ambushed and killed on March 14, 1795. Chatelier led the Garifuna people in guerrilla campaigns against the invading French and the British for several years in the latter part of the 1700s. He won most of his battle as he was a brilliant military strategist. He was a world-class diplomat and most importantly, he was and still is today loved and respected by his people. In commemoration of the life and struggles of this, the greatest son of our Vincentian soil, March 14th is celebrated as National Heroes Day. In 2001, this day was declared by proclamation an act of parliament followed. Acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Ralph Egan Siles, and in accordance with the sections of, of the sections 11 and 12 of the Order of National Heroes, Act Number no. 7 of 2002, His Excellency, the Governor General, at the time, Sir Charles Entrobus, conferred the Order of the National Hero upon the right excellent Paramount Chief Joseph Strassier. It was formalized from the 14th of March, 2002, that he is our nation's first national hero, the right excellent Paramount Chief Joseph Chatelier. I thank you. Thank you very much. It is often said that a child should lead them. At this time, we will have the Lane of the Reeds. But of course, at this time, we recognize the gun salute in honor of Joseph Chatier. the 21 gun salute in honor of the right excellent paramount chief Joseph Chatier and uh, this morning we're getting the cloud cover now we had some brilliant sunshine earlier but now it's all cloud cover I believe the gun salute is complete and uh, we can now hear the of honor being and at ease the next item on the agenda is the presentation of the reads and uh, there might be a slight adjustment to the order that we have been advised uh, so be guided by uh, the MC but of course the first day is Her Excellency the General uh, Dame 
Captain Duggan, who will at this time receive a wreath. With the Royal St. Vincent and the Redeans Police Force, the right hand of God is the name of the track they are uh, using in this case. Dorsetra Hill is on the northeastern portion of the monument. At the base, there's a sign reading to the right excellent Paramount Chief Joseph Chatier died 14 March 1795. Now, the Prime Minister of Washington and the Grenadines, the Honorable Dr. Ron V. Gonzalez, receives a wreath from uh, female member of the cadet force and uh, gracefully accepts as he proceeds to the base of the monument in honor of right excellent paramount chief chatier and chooses to lay his wreath on the eastern or east southeastern part of the monument just to give you an idea uh, this wreath is laid in, in the direction of Kings Hill, sense of direction. The honor of Her Majesty's opposition, His Majesty's opposition rather. The Honorable Dr. Godwin Friday now receives a wreath from another female member of the cadet force and proceeds to the base of the police. Also gazes up and lays the wreath next to that of the honorable facing to the east. The Honorable Montgomery Daniel, the Deputy Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, will now accept a wreath on behalf, uh, well, from a member of the cadet force. and. Uh, he at this point makes his way to the base and uh, the Honourable Minister uh, being of Garifuna descent himself it is a very important occasion for him like many others of Garifuna descent and Vincentians on the whole here today very solemnly places his wreath on the western part of the base of the Obelisk Monument. The Honorable Carlos James, Minister of Tourism, Culture, etc., now proceeds to place his wreath on the southern part of the obelisk in a graceful bow and quickly moves away from the Monument. The Honorable Curtis King. Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King, is the next minister to lay a wreath. And we see some threatening clouds on the horizon and uh, an attempt be made to quicken the process at this time. Minister King is now moving to the base and gazes up the top in respect the monument chooses the his wreath on the part of the, the base Honorable just to the west of the Grenadine Islands and Baliso and uh, the islands down the chain. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture, Saboto Caesar, receiving a wreath now from a female member of the cadet force proceeds to her position and uh, his wreath at the southwestern edge of the monument and quickly proceeds out of the base area. 
now members of the diplomatic corps his excellency jose ventura last evening there was a farewell reception held in his honor and i suspect this will be his final appearance here uh, present a wreath uh, of right excellent joseph chatier and uh, he chooses to lay his on the end facing Maliso for a sense of direction and a kind of back way. Her Excellency Fiona Fan, Ambassador of China and Taiwan. Excellency Fiona Fan, the Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan. This is her first National Heroes Day celebration uh, as uh, she was recently assigned as Ambassador to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, Her Excellency Fiona Fan very gracefully bows and uh, chooses to lay her wreath on the southern end of the monument. Another bow of respect and uh, exits the base of the monument. Mr. Slight drizzle at uh, this time. Hopefully I uh, would not put a damper on what we're having here at this point of view. Uh, our British High Commissioner uh, is the moving forward uh, to present a uh, brief and uh, as they sprinkle turns to us uh, we continue with the presentation of Reith. He chooses to lay his wreath on the southern end and uh, that's British High Commissioner Mr. Godfrey uh, Geoffrey Patton his Excellency Francisco Manuel Perez Santana, who is the Taji Affairs of the Embassy of the Republican Republic of Venezuela. And uh, he gazes up at the monument and uh, chooses to lay his wreath on the northern side of the monument. As the drizzle gets a tad bit heavier, the Commission of Police, Mr. Edward Williams, at this time receives a wreath from a member of the cadet force. A salute in true military style. And uh, the Commissioner moves gracefully into position to lay his wreath and uh, chooses to lay his wreath on the eastern side of the base with a salute, a mark of respect to our lone national hero, the right excellent Joseph Chateauier, our Major Mount Chief. Cambridge on behalf of the SVG Cadet Corps. Major Philip Cambridge, ADC to Her Excellency the Governor General, will now receive the wreath from a member of his organization. He, of course, has recently been elevated to their rank of Major, having been Captain for some time. Major Cambridge in true precision as we've always admired of him will now move into position and uh, offers a salute and chooses to lay his wreath on the western edge of the base as the drizzle passes by now and we are relieved for some time of the potential on behalf of the SVG Boy Scouts Association. The SVG Boy Scouts Association I received a wreath from a member of that as association. Uh, change of guard. The cadets will come back into play shortly. And uh, there's a presentation being done on behalf of Commissioner Lemuel Providence for the Boy Scouts Association. Next, the Girl Guides Association, the SVG Girl Guides Association. It will be led by Zaranik Forbes and uh, Terracio Ross. Presented by one and led by the other. I see now the patch of the Prime Minister. 
and uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, as he greets those along the way, Theresia, uh, chooses to lay the reed at the southwestern end of Zoila the case. Ellis Brown of the Garifuna Heritage Foundation. The Garifuna Heritage Foundation, represented by Zola Ellis Brown, is moving forward at this time to receive a wreath and uh, lay that wreath at the base of the monument. And uh, chooses to do so on the southern end, laying atop some other wreaths and incidentally pointing directly to Baliso to give you a sense of direction. We are waiting the next uh, wreath. The Queen Frida Sederoff and the Eurema Royal Delegation moving forward to present greet at this time. Queen Frida we now move forward as she solemnly gazes up along with those who are part of the delegation and very slowly moves to lay her reed and like the one before it's laid on the southern end of the monument in very solemn style and again facing Maliso in sense of direction and the, the Grenadine Islands. The Belize Garifuna community will now lay their wreath. Represented by Lucia Gillis. Hope I have the surname correct. Uh, Lucia is her name and uh, she is laying that wreath on the south western end, south southwest at the end a representative of the Garifuna of the Heritage Rites of Passage and Pilgrimage Delegation 20 Monument. The Garifuna Heritage Rites of Passage and Pilgrimage Delegation 2024 is about to present the wreath. Uh, this is a very momentous occasion for them. They are home, their ancestral homeland, Yorome. And uh, gracefully places the wreath facing to the northeast. A representative of the general employees of the And uh, according to our list, this should be the final wreath. I believe there'll be one more. Uh, this is a representative of Geku who will be moving forward. I believe uh, the Green Hills Porch and Cultural Club, but as an NGO, will be also presenting a wreath here this morning. And uh, the General Employees Cooperative Credit Union Rep now receiving the wreath and proceeds to the base of the monument and uh, chooses to lay that wreath on the south, uh, southern, southwestern part. Um, see, she's uh, picking a spot more to the south of the monument and uh, two representatives of the Green Hill Sports and Cultural Club uh, lay Ladies a wreath as part of their uh, contribution. So as we have the band, uh, the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force providing musical accompaniment. There's also a special group uh, that's here as part of the delegation as well. Uh, and they'll be providing some entertainment as well uh, during the course of uh, so well, the, the rest of the proceedings. The Garifuna Warriors. And the Garifuna Warriors. Gar 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 as they perform for us. Uh, they, they'll be performing for us to... Uh, bring the curtains down as we get ready to bring the curtains down of the National Heroes Day celebrations 
uh, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So uh, we will get that performance shortly. See they're yeah, moving yeah, yeah. into place. Yeah, yeah, well, and uh, of course, this is a display of Garifuna culture from those who survived the atrocities of Maliso. And uh, very rooted people they are, are those who are from Central American countries where the Garifuna peoples where the Garifuna peoples settled after uh, being sailed from Baliso to Central America in less than accommodative conditions. And they survived the journey and many of their descendants are here today and proudly celebrating their heritage, the language, the dance, the music. They are proud to be Garifuna and uh, as they say when they usually come, they're home. Let's listen in as we get some entertainment from the group. Welcome you wherever you are, on air, online, radio, television, social media. Thanks very much for joining us here this morning and do have a great um, day Greetings. <laughs> wow, this, it's, man. No, I'm sorry. No, I got emotional. I'm sorry. 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 Is the defensive mechanism of what we use to fight against the British. And this dance is about um, when the women, no, sorry, the British were attacking the women. And they were attacking the women because the woman is the basic of life, it's where it's all everything starts birth, from childhood, nurture, everything. And without women, I don't think men and men can uh, can reproduce, you know, within each other. I don't. I, I'm not smart, but I know that the, that can't happen. It's impossible. <laughs> so, Barao, the the wife of Chief Joseph Chautier, said to him, "Give me your pants, and I will give you my skirt." Meaning, the men dress as women, and the women dress as men. So when the British were attacking the women, it was actually a man and defend himself and another proof that we were never slaved another proof that we man, I will repeat it again another proof that we were never slaved you know and this is the dance Nanya, <laughs> Tuli 
Bagwanya, Nuguyakanya, Ira Willi, Hariabu, Ola Gulita, Nauhanya, La Gulita, Solea Loma, Nabaro Hanya, Hariabu, Ure, Ure, Viva. Ditule alma no marujaña y la huili. Oye, va a guaña, no voy a gaña y la huili. Y la cuñeta, no gaña, la cuñeta. Tú le a lo más no marujaña y la huili. Ure, ure, me va. Ditule alma no marujaña y la huili. Ngai ba kwanya nuku ya kanya hira wili hari abu Mya mala owe yo nuku juro Mya mala owe yo tao Gere te pegi ya bichari harure ba Gere te pegi ya bichari harure ba Gere te pegi ya bichari harure ta Nya nuku juro O bia mala o beyo no gojuro, bia mala o beyo da. Gere de peitia, palat. Gere de peitia, bichare harure. A gere de peitia, bichare harure da niya. Mujer vieta, hachari un montón que puse gato. La suya la boca, muria, llama la boca y otra. Quere de peitia, bichare jarureta. Quere de peitia, bichare jarureta. Yeah. Quere de peitia, bichare jarureta. ओ Punta. Eh, nena, gufe tu ya. Pipiri muyeli ya pa' yute. Nena, gufe. Pipiri muyeli ya pa' yute. Nena, gufe. 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 Oh, <laughs> 
do Zulindo. Falou a rei da minha garina boa. Oh, alegria, boa e a bebê, vai água. Na do Zulindo. Falou a rei da minha garina boa. Alegria, boa e a bebê, vai água. Na do Zulindo. Falou a rei da minha garina boa. Alegria, boa e a bebê, vai água. Na do Zulindo. It's our live broadcast here thank from Dos Such a Hill as we uh, thank you is being done now by the MC. Uh, what an experience that was, and I think the spirit of dance took over, and uh, many, many of those who were present just got hold of the spirit and joined in dance. Um, have a look. We just uploaded a, a short video on our page, uh, facebook.com forward slash NBCSVG, and I'm sure the other platforms may just share that as well. And, of course, you can review the live stream at your convenience as well. That concludes our live broadcast here across the platforms of the National Broadcasting Corporation, the Agency for Public Information, and VC3 Television. Thanks very much to all those uh, responsible and all those taking our broadcast this morning, which we may or may not be aware of. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining in on the live feed. Thanks to the entire production team, led by uh, Rohan Zoro Bennett Morgan and his very capable team, of camera operators from the Agency for Public Information and uh, VC3 Television, a joint effort of all three entities, NBC, VC3, API. Here's wishing you a safe one today as you go out and enjoy a beautiful National Heroes Day. Remember the reason why we're observing this day and uh, do celebrate and consume some of the local delicacies which you find at places like Greg's and Fancy and all the uh, areas today and do have a safe and an enjoyable National Heroes Day today. On behalf of all of us here at the various entities of NBC VC3 API, thank you very much for joining and returning you to your various master controls. I'm Colvin Harry. <laughs>